And now we have him on screen. Fantastic. Welcome, Samuel. So, Samuel is a scientist in DSO National Laboratories, and he works on developing navigation algorithms for Singapore's first formation flying satellite mission. He also performs orbit design, simulation, and mission analysis. So, today he's going to talk to us about Orbit M that allows you to size up your mission lifetime with the click of a button. Sounds wonderful. So, thanks for joining us, Samuel, and the floor is yours. All right, thank you for accepting me for this uh, workshop. Um, so before I start, maybe I better thank uh, the organizers. You guys have done a fantastic job. I've thoroughly enjoyed all of the presentations so far. And a special shout out to Juan Louis also, because he was the one who actually introduced me to OSCW like many months ago when I first chatted with him. So in the spirit of the open source CubeSat workshop, I'll be introducing to you guys the Orbit M or Orbit Maintenance and Propulsion Sizing Tool. And in this presentation, I really just want to touch on three main questions and how Orbit M can answer all of them. So the first question is why should orbit maintenance analysis actually be fast? The second question is, how can it be much faster, especially with the way we are doing things right now? And finally, I'm going to run through what Orbit M offers and how you can actually use this software. So now when we are moving to this new space industry, we realize that a lot of satellites need very AL development. And that means that your requirements are changing all the time also especially if you're in your initial review stages, you often contemplate between different solar cell structures. Uh, if you're using a SAR satellite, then you'll be thinking about what kind of different reflectors you should use. Each time a new idea gets proposed, the area to mass ratio of the satellite changes, and then you have to run the whole orbit maintenance simulation all over again. Now for, uh, in my company, where one of the issues that we had is we, we, we were very reliant on this uh, using commercial software like SDK. And so a lot of things can actually be sped up and simplified if we used our own, um, say, I wouldn't say proprietary, but at least our own way of doing things. So we found that things like the reflector changed like two or three times in the uh, solar panel arrays, they were contemplating sometimes between uh, looking at taking inspiration from Gosama, which is like thin film solar array, so it's like soft materials, and also looking at how other companies like SpaceX does a more mechanical rigid deployer, so this one is probably heavier in mass. So with so many iterations, um, we decided that we have to, or rather I decided that I have to make the orbit maintenance analysis much faster. So before I actually run through how it works, this is like the typical workflow of how you set up an orbit maintenance simulation in SDK or maybe GMAT. So there are a lot of objects. You make the scenario, you make the satellite, the astrogator parameters have to be set, and you have to set a whole bunch of um, routines in the GUI. And it was just really too much work, especially if you have 10 different iterations that you want to check the mission lifetime of or possibly 10 different propulsion units that you want to test. So I decided, let's see if there is an easier way to make orbit maintenance analysis faster. So I'm going to hold everyone back. Uh, the math, uh, like I was not expecting to put too much math in, but I thought I should put enough to uh, let everyone understand. So how do we actually make it faster? Well, the key idea is that a lot of these commercial satellite propagation softwares, they actually they propagate all six of your state vectors and some do it with very high precision, which is good. But in lifetime simulation, actually your decay rate depends on how thick your atmosphere is, your atmospheric density and your drag effects. And so you don't actually need to compute all six of your state vectors in each uh, iteration. You actually only need to compute your absolute scalar radial values. So let's starting from this, let's see if there's a way with that we can actually make the um, drag computations a lot simpler. So if you look at the left box over here, this is just the total orbital energy that we, we've learned maybe in our first year physics. And from here, I want to derive two quantities, and I'll show you why these two quantities are important later. First, I will derive what is the rate of change at which energy 
uh, changes with my radius. And finally, the rate of change at which energy changes with time. And the first parameter, the radial derivative, can be taken by just simply differentiating whatever you see on the left-hand side, the total orbital energy. The time derivative, um, we go back to first principles and we just look at how work done is defined, right? The rate of change of the energy is the force multiplied by this uh, ds, is your infinitesimal uh, movement in the direction of your uh, motion dotted with the direction of your force. And doing all of this, we realize that this time derivative simplifies to three main parameters. One is your drag force, two is the actual orbit radius, and three is actually your mean motion. And so let's put this together. So we have derived the radial derivative and we've derived the time derivative. And this very simplified model that I created simply just says that, okay, I don't need to compute my six orbital elements. I just need to compute what is the rate of change of my radius with respect to time, the radius of the satellite with respect to time. And if you just look at the, ignoring the math on the right-hand side first, this is with some uh, calculus, it's just du over dr inverse. So it's actually dr over du dotted with du dt. And this gives us dr dt. With, uh, in the interest of time, I won't touch too much on the derivation, but the final result is actually really, really simple. Oh, um, one important thing also, you have to, you need at least a, a fast way to compute your atmospheric density. So for orbit M, it uses a lookup table, so there's no need for any computation. It just looks up the atmospheric density, plugs it in the drag equation, and the drag equation also goes into this alpha drag term over here. So ignoring all of, all of that math, the final equation for orbit decay rate, it's a simplified model, again, boils down to this very simple um, expression. The rate of which your orbit decays is just simply the product of this drag deceleration, your Keplerian period, and this entire product divided by pi. So I shared a bit about this um, simple model uh, in, in uh, some paper that I wrote two years ago. And this actually really speeds up the orbit decay computation in orbit M as compared to using STK manually. So this is now a run through of the Orbit M GUI. It's actually really, really simple T Kinter uh, kind of a layout here. Um, if you git clone the re repo, um, so no coding, no, you don't have to like pour through the code. You just need to run the Orbit M.py and you can specify what orbit simulator you want to use. You can use the simplified one, which I, I didn't know what else to call it, so I just call it SAMS. It can also, you, if you have an SDK license, you can also use it to automate your programs in SDK. Um, this was not intended, but, it was, it, but it, I did it anyway just to make sure that I can check it with my um, drag models results. So you input in your epochs, your spacecraft parameters, your orbit parameters, and you set your maintenance tolerance bands. Um, as well as your margins. So for example, 200% margin means you have a 100% safety net. The output of Orbit M, it gives you a propulsion sizing chart. It shows you how your altitude will vary over time, as well as a delta V report. So this is a rough flow of the fast computation. The key idea is when I fall below a certain tolerance over here, I compute a first order delta V, apply it, and I instead of doing a full orbit propagation as per commercial software, the only thing I do is just solve for this new change in the radius. And this uh, takes into account, it's not just for circular orbits, it takes into account for elliptical orbits too. Whereas for STK, um, it does do a high precision orbit propagator, and it takes into account all of these four forces over here. So you have your sun and moon, you have a, a more comprehensive drag model, solar radiation pressure, the so solid tides and ocean tides. Um, if you want to use, if you're an SDK user, or you don't actually need to switch on SDK 
manually and create your own scenario. So simply by selecting the SDK 10 or SDK 11 mode, you can automate the entire SDK scenario setup process too. The total runtime um, on like most work standard workhorse laptops that I've tested on in my company, it takes about 15 minutes to run a two or three, two to three year mission in SDK. Whereas in Orbit M, it literally just gives you the results in like one second. So it also outputs a, the first thing it outputs, you'll see that you'll have an additional file in your main directory and it's called the Orbit Maintenance Scheduling Report. It tells you how many Orbit maintenance, how many thrusts you would expect. And by default, the program is currently set to thrust at the apogee and perigee because we assume that the user wants to keep their eccentricity unchanged. So especially so if it's like a frozen repeat ground track orbit, right? And then it gives you a rough estimate of how often you need to perform your maneuvers. And finally, the delta V value. So because we use a, instead of doing some um, thrust optimization and complex computations, the, the, you just want to get a ballpark figure. So this delta V value is really computed, just a first order um, Taylor expansion for the Vs Visa equation. And so you see that every value is the same because it's, it's the same first order that's used. It's the same amount of delta V that you need to cover your tolerance band whenever your uh, satellite falls below a certain height. And now for the uh, fun, fun part, this is what the um, analysis actually gives you. So the blue lines, the, the blue plots are actually the fast solvers. So uh, it's the very simplified, it's the one that uses the very simplified orbit decay rate. And you get the results out in like one second. The orange plots are the SDK plots. So this is SDK using high precision orbit propagator and astrogator. And so the left plot shows the um, mean altitude. The middle plot shows the mean semi-major axis. And the right plot is what would be useful to um, mission analysts or even to propulsion scientists like uh, Michael Bretti's presentation yesterday in AIS, if he wants to size up certain propulsion units versus the class of mission types. So for example, microsatellite mission types would need typically at least 100 meters per second of delta V or more. And so you can see where your uh, thruster lies. So nanoavionics, this is a thruster that's meant for cube satellite missions. Whereas you see the Hall effect thrusters like the BUSAC, Aliana, and uh, LAGP from uh, Ukraine, these fall under the micro satellite ranges. They're meant for satellites about 200 kg and above. And as long as it exceeds the curve, it means that you have the, the height of this bar chart represents the mass of the fuel that this thruster can carry. So one thing interesting is that at least it shows as a ballpark figure, the fast solvers um, delta V or total fuel mass required on the y-axis is close enough to the value that SDK gives out. So you can size your propulsion units easily on the right chart too, right? Because um, your mission lifetime is often dependent on how much fuel you can carry and what is the efficiency of your thruster, which is measured by this specific impulse here. So this mission was run for 450 kilometers. Um, the parameters are given here. Then we did it for 500 kilometers mean altitude too. And not much difference in the trend of the results. At 550 kilometers, interestingly, um, and I'm not sure why, the propulsion sizing, the amount of delta V computed for the fast solver in blue matches the result from SDK 10 exactly on this chart. I think it was like an order of difference of about millimeters per second. So um, since most of the future LEO constellations will be around the 400 to 600 bell, at least this is some, um, at least it's a measure of confidence that it's not too far off from the, uh, using SDK as a ground truth is not too far off. So um, in summary, it's, Orbit M is a Python-based orbit maintenance simulator. I, I, I thought it would be a useful tool for the open source community, which will help you to size your mission lifetime very quickly. 
It can also help you to determine what class of missions your propulsion units are suitable for. And it's most useful if your satellite design has many physical iterations with changing area to mass. So you can run like 20 to 30 lifetime simulations an hour and you can get the results like almost instantly if you're using the fast solver. Yeah. And finally, Orbit M is looking for collaborators versus in GMAT since SDK, as we know, is on the orders of hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's not free. So if anybody here is well versed in GMAT and would like to contribute and automate GMAT orbit maintenance using Orbit M in Python, please let me know. Excellent. And with that, thank you. Um, I forgot to put the most important thing, which is my uh, the repository URL, so I'll post it in the chat. Right. That's now. also a question here. Yes. Uh, thank you, Samuel. Thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Um, we'll start uh, directly with some questions that we have already. Um, the first question is from Leonard. Uh, what is the precision or accuracy between SAM and SDK? I think you touched uh, briefly onto that, but uh, if you can summarize this a bit. Yeah. Um, so far, we haven't tested, we tested it, or okay, so I've tested it between 400 to 600 kilometers. Um, I think the biggest difference was, the biggest margin was a close about 15% difference. Uh, usually, SAM's propagate, or I wouldn't call it propagator, SAM's solver tends to overestimate your delta V. So that's kind of safe, right? Because you always want to overpromise. You know, you always want to underpromise, and then you over deliver on your mission later on, right? So it's best to overestimate it anyway. Um, and what is the future of Orbitem? I want to. So I want to extend it to GMAT because for non non SA users or users who don't have uh, financial access to expensive satellite software. Um, there isn't any alternative right now besides SAM's solver and SDK. Right now, I'm comparing it with SDK. So I'm looking at either GMAT or as a land also ORCID. Uh, ORCID could also be another. So you kind of like you can run two simulations and then you can compare how close their results are to each other. And, and at least you know, like it's a sanity check that you're not too far. I was wondering, um, since uh, you did simulations and you compared, uh, uh, but uh, did you also tested against real data because we have CubeSats uh, decaying or deorbiting, I guess, once per week. There's so many up there or other uh, fragments or small satellites. Um, and for some of them, you, I guess you can get some good tracking data to cross-check your algorithms. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. So um, I've actually tested it also against one of our satellites, which was, it's called Velox C1, and it was a microsatellite that's launched by Nanyang Technological University uh, five years ago. So I managed to get the GPS data down, and when I tested out STKs, uh, my solver, and the actual GPS data, it was a 500 kilometer orbit. Uh, from the back of my mind, I remember mine, because I was very proud that mine was closer. Uh, the actual decay was about 2.2 kilometers, and uh, mine was like 2.3, and SDK estimated 3.5 kilometers uh, decay over, like, I think it was one year and 10 months. No, sorry, about 10 months. Yeah, it's about close to 10 months without any propulsion. It was close to that amount. Um, I don't remember the exact figures, but the data for those decay values are given in citation number three uh, when I was sharing it at small set two years ago. Yeah, okay. so Good. actually this project is an extension of, of um, that work so that you know, everybody can access orbit maintenance easily. Thanks for the questions. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. And uh, I think that that would be all uh, for this uh, talk. And we need to move to the next one. Um,